Oh, John Kyle, the Senate's number two Republican. And Senator, welcome back to Fox News. Thanks Sunday. very much, Chris. As we said, the president starts talks tomorrow, separate talks with Senate Democratic Leader Harry Reid, then with Senate Republican Leader Mitch McConnell. Given the GOP's refusal to include any new revenue, what's the basis for a deal? Well, it, we have not refused any new revenue. For example, we've been discussing some fee increases and some other things that would actually generate revenue. But what we object to is changing the tax code. We don't need new taxes right now. We need to reduce spending. Uh, but the White House is talking about $3 in spending cuts for every $1 in additional revenue. Uh, given the fact that you've got a divided government, you don't control the Republicans the whole deal, and given the fact that the stakes are so enormous, the danger of the country going into default, why isn't that a three to one spending to taxes? Why isn't that a fair deal? <clears throat> First of all, the key here is to get economic growth going again. In the last quarter, our economic growth was less than 2%. I think it was 1.8 or 1.9%. We need to put people back to work. Most economists agree that in times of economic downturn like this, the last thing you want to do is to add more taxes onto the economy. So it would be inimical to economic growth and job creation, which is what we all ought to be urging here. When our economy grows and people are making more money, at the same income tax rates, they will pay a lot more in taxes and the government will have more revenues. But you don't want to pile taxes on at a time when companies don't have the ability to invest and hire people. That's the primary reason we are opposed to raising taxes right now. There's also a very practical problem in the House of Representatives. It's not going to pass if you have a big tax increase in there. Uh, we're going to get to the economic growth aspect in a minute, but let's just go through the taxes because the White House says, and let's just make it clear what we're talking about here, the White House says they've given up on the idea of raising tax rates for individuals, even those over $250,000. They understand the politics, as you say, of the House, that it's just a non-starter. But let's go through some of the things, <coughs> Senator, that they are proposing. Let's put it on the screen. Limit deductions, tax deductions, for households making more than $500,000 a year to 10% of gross adjusted income. They say that would bring in $210 billion over the next decade. And here's the argument the White House is going to make. I want you to respond to it. They say, do you really want to be protecting mortgage deductions for millionaires at the same time that you're cutting Medicare for seniors? Well, let's be clear. What they're talking about is charitable giving, mortgage deductions, that sort of thing. And it always happens. They aim at the millionaires and the billionaires, but there's not enough money for those folks to run the government for very long. So they end up affecting everybody. That's what the alternative minimum tax did. And I think that's what would actually happen here. We have always been willing to consider so-called tax expenditures, but as the president originally proposed, in the context of overall tax reform. He has said, for example, let's eliminate some of these, and they're called tax expenditures, even though you don't think of a deduction for charitable giving as a tax expenditure. But if we could reduce... But it's money that the Treasury is giving is, us. Is foregoing. Right. And so if you could uh, uh, reduce some of those, you could also then reduce overall tax rates. And if you look at, uh, at the United States as a, as a worldwide competitor, for example, the president himself has proposed eliminating some of those things for business so that we could reduce the overall corporate tax rate. So what we've said is we're perfectly willing to consider those kinds of issues in the context of tax reform, which we would very much like to do. But we're not going to have the time to do it or be able to do it in order just to raise revenue as a part of this exercise, which should be about reducing spending. All right. Let's put up another White House proposal. It doesn't involve individual taxes. It involves tax breaks for specific businesses. Put it on the screen. Eliminate oil and gas subsidies for companies making more than have more than a billion dollars in annual profits. They say that would raise twenty one billion dollars. And again, this is at a time when Republicans are demanding big cuts in government programs and services. Yeah, there are several answers here. First of all, if you want gas prices to rise, if you want to pay more than four bucks at the pump, then go ahead and do this. That's not what we should be about right now. That, that kind of tax increase is going to flow right through the consumer. Everybody knows that. Secondly, what you're doing is picking out one industry in the, in the United States, an industry that employs almost 10 million people. It represents about 7.5% of our gross domestic product. And you're saying to them, you are not going to get the same kind of tax treatment that all other manufacturing uh, corporations get in the United States. So we're going we're gonna to punish you because you make a lot of money. It's also true that with those big profits, they have enormous costs of investment. You've 
of course, covered the issue of how much it costs to put one of those platforms out in the middle of the Gulf of Mexico. It's billions of dollars, so it's big money all the way around. But you're going to hurt the American consumer if you impose more taxes on them. I want to get back to the argument you made that raising taxes is going to hurt the economy, because that's certainly a serious argument, particularly with such a re weak recovery. If taxes is the wrong solution, what about these spending cuts? And does that conceivably hurt the economy? Uh, Fed Chairman Ben Bernanke this week said, look, I support long-term debt reduction, but I'm not convinced. In fact, he opposed the idea of big cuts right now. Let's watch. In light of the, um, the weakness of the recovery, it would be best not to have sudden and sharp uh, fiscal consolidation in the very near term. Isn't that, Senator, a, a, an argument for serious debt reduction, serious spending cuts over the long term, but not right away when you've got 1.8 percent growth and even perhaps some targeted spending increases? I'm not sure what you can read into that very obtuse statement. But the reality is... Well, for it, Fed speak, it was clear yeah, as a bell. Right, yeah. <laughs> right. But just take the Ryan budget. That's supposed to be the most radical thing. Okay, over 10 years, the Ryan budget adds $5 trillion to our national debt. We would have 10 straight years of roughly $500 billion in increased debt. So the radical cuts that some people are talking about and that the chairman warns against are simply not a part of the Republican plan. Now, once you begin to turn down the long-term spending, which is what the Ryan budget does, then you get back to a point where we're only spending 20% of our, our economy, uh, or of the GDP. Today, we're uh, spending 25%. The Obama budget never gets below 23, but that's what the Ryan budget does. Obama would add 12 billion over that same period of time to our debt. Let's talk about the stakes here. Uh, Fed Chairman Bernanke says that any default, and that's what we're talking about, the possibility of a default, on August 2nd could cause severe disruptions in financial markets. Some Republicans are saying, well, all right, we're not going to default. We're going to take the money that we have without raising the debt ceiling. We'll pay off our Chinese creditors first, and we'll cut government services. But Bernanke says that won't work either. Put this up on the screen. He says the Treasury would soon find it necessary to prioritize among and withhold critical disbursements such as Social Security and Medicare payments and funds for the military. And, Senator, he says that also would scare the markets. It probably would. And the question is, how do you uh, get the kind of reform in spending and in long-term uh, debt relief um, without scaring the markets here? We have proposed, I think, very sensible ways to do that. As I said, the Ryan budget actually gets to a primary balance uh, in the year 2014. So I think the markets would, would like that a lot. They would also like it if we did something serious on entitlement reform. But, but if, that, I, if I may, because we're running out of time, I mean, what, what I think what Bernanke is basically saying is, if you don't get a deal, or even if you don't get a deal and you decide, well, we'll pay the creditors, but we'll cut from government, this is going to scare the market. So how do you see this playing out? What are the chances you get a deal? that both sides can sign on to by August 2nd. Well, we have to do that. We have to try to do that. That's what I've been involved in in these negotiations. But when the president says there's one condition, you have to raise taxes. No, you don't have to raise taxes. Our problem is not that we pay too little in taxes. The problem aren't you is... putting a, your own condition on it? No taxes. Yeah, if you want to kill the economy, raise taxes. Are we going to vote to, to absolutely put another anchor around the neck of the economy, which is struggling to, to try to recover here? Absolutely not. It's terrible policy. So in 30 seconds, yeah, yeah. If, if he says you got to have taxes, even if it's one dollar for three dollars in spending cuts and you say no, how does that get resolved in the next I think the month? president has to make a decision which is more important to him, solving this problem, reducing spending somewhat or making sure that we raise taxes on the American economy. If that's his ideological bent here and under all circumstances that's what he's going to insist on, we've got a big problem. I think at the end of the day he'll recognize that simply getting a handle on spending and making sure that we can not hurt the economy is going to be the way to derive revenues in the future when the economy begins to recover. So basically you're saying he's going to agree to your terms? Well, I hope so. I, I hope he'll, he'll he's, he's got to make that choice, let's put it that way, and, and the obvious um, best choice, I think, is not doing anything to harm the economy at this point.